So the other day I was scrolling through YouTube and I stumbled across a video from Wendover Productions called Too Many People Are Going Outside. That's a hot take for a title, but I'm no stranger to uh, maybe exaggerating titles in YouTube videos. So I was like, you know what? Let's, uh, let's take a look and see what the video has to say. Katahdin, the towering 5,269 foot, 1,606 meter peak in the center of the park, stretches higher than any other mountain in the state, but unfurling 2,198.4 miles or 3,538 kilometers to its south is the Appalachian Trail perhaps the most legendary long-distance hiking trail in the world. In this context, though, legendary status is not necessarily a good thing. It's not? After nearly a century of limitless access along the entire stretch of the trail, Appalachian Trail through hikers would now be capped. As of 2017, only 3,150 would be allowed to complete their trek atop Mount Katahdin. That's not true. Now, I'm not here to just pick apart this video from a YouTuber who's much more successful than I am, but it does provide a good transition into talking about one of the biggest problems that's facing the Appalachian Trail today. It is true that Baxter State Park has a cap on the number of Appalachian Trail thru-hiker permits that they're giving out. However, I really want to stress this. It's not true that, quote, only 3,150 thru-hikers would be allowed to complete their trek atop Mount Katahdin. Quoting from the Appalachian Trail Conservancy's website, if the Katahdin AT hiker permit limit is reached, hikers may make a reservation for the night before they summit at another campground in Baxter State Park. Or they may leave the park and spend the night before they summit in Millinocket. They would then return to the park the following morning to climb Katahdin. In other words, all through hikers are still gonna be able to complete their trek atop Mount Katahdin. If the permit capacity is reached, the hikers after that will have to go through some additional logistics and it will be more of a pain, but they're still gonna be allowed to climb Katahdin and finish their hike. But I do think the tone of this video and also perhaps the omission of certain facts from it does speak to a growing paranoia about the Appalachian Trail becoming too crowded. So with that said, let's talk about it. And we're also going to talk about being hydrated on the Appalachian Trail, or any trail for that matter, because this video is sponsored by Drink Element. I know you guys hate me when I do these sneaky sponsor segues, but I really do think you should check out Drink Element. It's really, really important that you stay hydrated when you're sweating a lot, when you're working hard on the trail, and it's not enough just to drink water. You need to make sure that you're replacing your electrolytes, because if you don't do that, you're going to get fatigued, your muscles are going to cramp up. It's just not a good thing. Why should you do that? You might be asking, well, the truth is because drink element tastes the best it tastes way better than any crap you're gonna find at walmart it tastes way better than any other electrolyte drink mix i've ever had and not only does it taste good but it's also really good for you so many other electrolyte drink mixes are full of sugar and full of crap drink element has no sugar in it all it has is the electrolytes that you need to stay safe and hydrated on the trail let's talk about grapefruit salt dude this new flavor that they have it is the best flavor from them I've ever had. So I would highly recommend you go to drinkelement.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. That's drinklmnt.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. Go order some of this grapefruit salt. And when you do that through the link that I just mentioned there, you're going to have a sample pack of eight different flavors they make thrown in with your order for no extra cost. And that's a great deal because Drink Element has so many amazing flavors that nobody else in the electrolyte drink mix game is doing. They have things like mango, chili, lemon, habanero, chocolate, salt, or even an unflavored version if you don't want a flavor for some reason they got it. They definitely do have the more standard flavors, but they just have these really cool ones that is they're just so unique as well. And so I think you guys should get to try them one more time. Drinklmnt.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. Go make an order. Go get a free sample pack thrown in. You'll be able to try all the flavors. Drink Element is amazing. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video and so many of my videos in the past. So is the Appalachian Trail overcrowded? I think a lot of people would answer that question with a yes, but the truth is there's a little bit more to it than that. For the vast majority of the year, on the vast majority of the trail, hardly anybody is gonna be out there. If you go hike in the middle of the 100 mile wilderness in December, 
you're probably not going to see anybody. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you do that. It's really only specific spots and specific times of the year that are seeing these huge crowds. If you're starting a through hike of the Appalachian Trail in March down at Springer Mountain, that, that first part of the trail, it's going to be crowded. If you're hiking in the middle of what they call the bubble, which is the largest group of through hikers as it moves north along the trail, yeah, it's probably going to be pretty damn crowded. And if you visit popular spots along the trail at pretty much any point during the summer, like Max Patch or Mount Washington or McAfee Knob, you're not only going to see lots of through hikers, but you're also going to see eat way, way more just day use and weekend section hikers. But that's just my opinion. And let's be honest, my opinion doesn't mean sh**. So what does the Appalachian Trail Conservancy have to say about overcrowding on the AT? Is crowding a problem? The AT offers hundreds of day hikes and overnight sites over its 2,190 mile length. The ATC has designed a task force to prepare for larger numbers of hikers by promoting leave no trace practices, dispersing start dates of through hikers through a voluntary through hiker registration system. The task force has also been promoting two new patterns of hiking that better disperse hikers and reduce impacts. One is promoting alternative through hike itineraries that encourage through hikers to start their hikes mid trail. Another is introducing the 14 state challenge, which promotes enjoyment of the diverse landscapes of the AT by day hiking. Hiker education is of the utmost importance for keeping the trail in pristine condition. So clearly the ATC is taking this issue seriously, but downsides. Obviously there's gotta be some downsides to all this increase in use among through hikers. Probably the most obvious downside is the environmental impact. Now I am no environmental expert. I'm not gonna even try to pretend that I am, but I think it goes without saying that more foot traffic on the Appalachian Trail opens up the possibility for more damage to the environment, more people setting up campsites and killing some of the vegetation there, impacting the environment. More people potentially going off trail or, you know, walking around mud pits and kind of widening the trail, not to mention more people not following leave no trace potentially and, you know, going off and going to the bathroom and not covering it up or leaving trash. Most people starting fires, making new fire pits, you know, just violating all sorts of leave no trace principles. Another downside is that when there's more people on the trail, it kind of does take away from everybody's wilderness experience. Sometimes when there's a ton of people on a hiking trail or at a particular campsite, it kind of puts a damper on things. Like you go out to the trail, you want to be alone in nature, or at the very least, you don't want to be dealing with hordes of people. But in some spots on the Appalachian Trail, that can just happen. You can roll up to a campsite and there's hardly any space there. What little space there is left is gonna be right next to other people. It definitely doesn't feel like a wilderness experience. I think it's somewhat valid to complain about it sometimes, although I'm only saying that because I've been caught on camera complaining about this. Luke, roll a clip. It's been a while since I've complained about <laughs> being around too many hikers. We are in a massive bubble of hikers right now. Everybody skipped up to Cascade Locks for trail days, and then instead of going back, they just said, screw it. Getting a, a town meal today, if we can fight off the thousands of hikers. Now in that clip, I wasn't on the AT, I was on the Pacific Crest Trail, but it is a similar thing out there too. There does get to a point where it's just like ridiculous, the amount of people trying to camp in one particular spot. It kind of sucks. However, there are actually some positives that have come out of the fact that more and more people are interested in through hiking the Appalachian Trail. I think the biggest positive of this increase in use, the more people that are through hiking means there's that many more people that are now also going to be interested and invested in making sure that the Appalachian Trail stays protected, even if that comes at the cost of some crowded campsites. Another positive, which is actually going to be a little contrary to what I just said as a negative, meeting people on an Appalachian Trail through hike is one of, if not the best part about the experience. Now again, I do complain sometimes when I'm hiking in crowded areas, and I'm definitely not the most social hiker out there. Hey, all you people. Hey, all you people, hey, all you people, won't you listen to me? But I gotta say, looking back at my Appalachian Trail through hike and my Pacific Crest Trail through hike attempt last year, the people that I met on these hikes, even though there was too many of them sometimes, at the end of the day, the people that I met on those two hikes was probably 
the best part of the entire experience. I mean, you guys know Flossie from the channel. I met him on my Appalachian Trail through hike in 2018, and he went on to be probably my best friend, a roommate for two years. I never would have made that connection if it wasn't for the Appalachian Trail. Another positive that comes out of the Appalachian Trail getting a lot of use is that this whole culture has emerged. If only a few people were through hiking each year, there wouldn't be YouTube channels, trail days, festival, what else? There just wouldn't be this whole community that has provided so much positivity to my life, certainly, and I would imagine a lot of you watching as well. And another positive of all the use the trail gets is the positives for the businesses that are located along the Appalachian Trail. There's an entire economy that revolves around thru hikers coming in and out of the towns that are along the trail. Hostels and restaurants and outfitters and other services that have sprung up by catering to hikers and if there wasn't a large number of hikers each year sure some of these businesses still might exist but they definitely wouldn't exist in the way that we know them today and lastly more people going outside more people enjoying the outdoors even if that does mean the trail is crowded sometimes i think is a by far a net positive to society it's great for your physical health it's great for your mental health even though again hiking on a crowded trail does kind of irk me in the moment i just need to step back and take a look at the bigger picture and i think the bigger picture really does clearly suggest that more people being outside is a good positive thing for everybody the question that i haven't really hit on yet in this video is what can be done about this overcrowding problem. And there's a number of solutions that have been put forth. Again, I'm not an expert on this, so I really do wanna hear your guys' comments, your thoughts, and I'm also gonna share my opinion for what it's worth, not very much. So the first thing is to implement a permit system kind of like the PCT has to, I guess, legally limit the amount of people that can through hike each year. Personally, I don't like this idea. On my PCT through hike attempt last year, most people had a permit, but I witnessed a lot of people who definitely did not have a permit and were still hiking. I also witnessed probably even more people who did have a permit, but didn't actually start on their specified date, which it clearly says if you don't start on your specified date, your permit is therefore invalid. I also only had my permit checked one time. So there's obviously just a lot of logistical problems with the permit system. The only way that you could truly enforce it is to have a large law enforcement presence on the trail, you know, rangers. Is that really what we want on the Appalachian Trail? But I, I don't know. I mean, it's also public land, most of the Appalachian Trail anyways. We all pay taxes on it. I don't know, I just don't like the idea of limiting people's access to public land. But that's just me. There are other solutions to this problem, some of which I highlighted at the beginning of the video when I was reading the ATC's website. A big solution is to encourage hikers to do alternative through hikes rather than the traditional northbound through hike you could go southbound. You're still gonna see some overcrowding when the northbound and southbound through hikes groups pass each other, the bubbles. You could do a flip-flop hike. You could also just consider other trails if the crowds are really a big issue for you. Now, I don't think that's a really a fair solution to this problem because it's kind of a cop-out telling people to go to other trails, but I do think that it's worth mentioning there's lots of trails out there that receive almost no foot traffic or, or, you know, at least compared to the AT, like the Cohas Trail in New Hampshire, the Northville Placid Trail in the Adirondacks of New York. I think another point worth mentioning, and this isn't really a solution to the problem, but you should just know what you're getting yourself into if you go on a northbound through hike. You are going to be in large crowds of people, especially at the start. It will thin out the further north you get because most people don't actually make it all the way to Katahdin. You're just smashing dab in the middle of a huge group of people and if that's going to be a big problem for you one last solution is just the continued education and advocacy about leave no trace this is something that i probably haven't done a great job of on my channel but it is something that the atc has done a great job of and something that we as individual hikers need to keep in mind a lot of times when people are violating leave no trace it's not because they're assholes. It's usually because they just don't really know. Like somebody might hike to the top of a mountain and be in like a fragile alpine zone. And then they might go and cut down a small tree to start a fire. 
And for some of us hiking nerds, that's like blasphemy, right? Like we see that we post on Instagram and Twitter and friggin' try to cancel the person. But if you think about it from someone who's not immersed in this world at all, like their perspective, they just hike to the top of a mountain. They're camping. They want to have a campfire. How do you get wood? You get it from a tree, cut down a tree. While it is not something that you should do, it is kind of understandable, right? So don't be the guy just going around telling people what to do, obviously. But if you ever do see a, a chance to educate someone, maybe it's a good idea to take that opportunity. I don't know, it's a it's a messy situation. Do you guys think the AT is overcrowded? If you do, let me know what you think the solution is in the comments, if there even is a real solution. I'd love to hear it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Help me get to my goal of 300,000 subscribers. That's the next one. If you haven't subscribed already, I would appreciate that. And uh, yeah, happy hiking.